All right, looks like it's loading up here. It looks like we are. Oh, yeah, there we are. We're live. We're live on Facebook. All and, right. Uh, delayed again, Nick. So this is, it, you know, it's going to take all we can to keep this rolling in the right direction okay. because we're getting a little delay here, but, okay. but we can do it, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going to jump in. Mick, we'll talk to you uh -huh. uh, in a little bit, but our guest has to get going. Um, has uh, He's way more important than us. He actually has other things to do besides this show. So we're going to just jump right into uh, introducing our guest, Robert Grace. Um, I don't even know how to introduce you, Robert. There, there's so many things that you've done and do. Uh, you know, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm great. Uh, I've been just enjoying the holiday weekend and, uh, you know, just got done doing a Martin Luther King Classic uh, tournament uh, for the last six hours here in, in, in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis. So, uh, you know, hey, now I'm just spending some time with my wife and we'll have uh, have dinner together. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and Robert, you and I go way back. Um, but why don't you can you can you give uh, the maybe the cliff note version of Robert Grace and, you know, where he grew yep. up and, you know, then you can kind of get into it. We can kind of get into where we sure. met and where you've been going and what you've been doing. Yep. Just a little history. Um, I, I actually, I'm from Gary, Indiana. Um, I've been in the Twin Cities uh, since 1994. I went to Augsburg College back then before it changed to Augsburg University. Um, and I played basketball. Uh, one of the assistant coaches uh, came down to Gary, Indiana to recruit me. And I, I, it was the same weekend of all-star basketball when uh, the, the all-star game was in Minneapolis. So it was a big sale. So um, I played basketball for three and a half years. Um, coach Tim was uh, one of my coaches at Augsburg while I was there. And uh, he had great influence on me keep, keep playing. Um, I had patella tendonitis in my right knee. And uh, Coach Tim was very positive, like, Robert, you could do this. You could do this. And, you know, one of, one of the best experienced uh, adults, um, I appreciate all the, the, the positive encouragement that you did for our program and, and appreciate you and what you do um, as, as a coach, Coach Tim. So, you know, I, I still remember that story when uh, I had to run 30-second line drills and you had to have the stopwatch. And he was like, you got this, you got this. And uh, I, I want to thank you publicly. And um, I, I appreciate that. And so I graduated in 98, a year before uh, the Devin George era of, of graduating at Augsburg basketball, stayed in the Twin Cities, uh, worked at GE Capital, uh, worked at Kraft Foods, corporate food sales um, out of college. And um, I actually was working for the Timberwolves as the hoop man. Now, a lot of people know me as the Timberwolves hoop man, where I've been there for 26 years, um, engaging with the fans. I don't do it as much anymore because of my business, but hopefully my son, who's a, a freshman at McAllister, can um, take over sooner or later if he has time. But um, th that, that opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, and, and, and being at, 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 Tim at Target Center, um, it kind of got me in food concessions. And um, I started looking around and saying, hey, you know, I think I can do this. And, and, and at the time, there was no small minority owned businesses um, in none of the large stadiums in the Twin Cities. And so um, I kind of started doing some homework and started my business in 2012 and um, started to be graceful concessions. And uh, my first uh, contract um, in the Twin Cities was a beach, uh, Long Lake Regional Park, uh, Ramsey County. I started really pushing the government contracts. Uh, those are my opportunity uh, that got me in the door, of, you know, as, as a small business owner um, during that time. And so I started enjoying it. My kids got involved. They were helping dad out. Um, you know, I was going to my, my daughter's track meet. She's a, she runs track at Wake Forest right now. So I was being a full time dad and being an entrepreneur um, in the last 10 years, you know, before COVID, you know. And so um, I'm at U.S. Bank Stadium. I do concessions for Viking games. Um, I have two concession stands there um, in three, 329 and section 122. Um, I have two cafes. 
um, which are one in downtown, which was one of the brand new buildings uh, with the George Floyd uh, trial. So our brand new building where we were are right across the street. Um, so we had to hold off on op opening because of, you know, so much we didn't know what was going to happen, you know, downtown in Minneapolis during that whole process um, a year ago, um, you know, during COVID. And so I also have a, a cafe in the state of Minnesota, um, the governor, governor's secretary of state building, uh, which we do sandwiches, box lunches, just the simple stuff. But um, it's grown. It's really grown. Uh, we made it through COVID. Um, and so that that's another thing. And. And uh, one of the opportunities, uh, just an elevator story, because of my relationship at, at with the Gophers and doing stadiums, um, we were able to do the Super Bowl. And so when the Super Bowl uh, came in, we were able to do the tailgate party uh, where all the owners bring all their families and friends down at the convention center. And it was just a lot of a lot of good, positive things that happened, you know, between 2015 and 2020. And so uh, that's kind of how we got started. Um, like I said, we do all gopher games, gopher football, Viking games. And, and three years ago, uh, Be Graceful was rewarded a, a contract at the airport, at MSP Airport. So I'm a partner with uh, HMS Host and Patty Rainier. We're, we're restaurant owners at the airport, um, in which Chili's, uh, if, you, if you've flown an MSP, if you go through the, um, the, the security, uh, Shake Shack, uh, Moles, Smash Burger, two Starbucks. So, you know, my wife and I, we're there, you know, once a month, twice a month to check on staff. And, um, you know, things are getting back to normal. Um, we've made it through COVID. Uh, the, the flying levels are back at 90 percent. But, um, you know, during COVID, we struggled. You know, we struggled how what, what, what is going to how we're going to get through this. But the federal government helped us out. They helped small minority businesses stay on their feet. And uh, we were able to, to keep going. So uh, that's a little, you know, small little things um, about me. And uh, go ahead with more questions. <laughs> yeah. well, that's great. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, growing up in Gary, Indiana. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's kind of talk about that. Obviously, when people think about Gary, Indiana, uh, you know, I mean, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, <laughs> Jackson right? Jackson 5. Jackson 5. Um, and, you know, and then obviously Gary Indiana also has a, you know, kind of a reputation of, uh, you know, being kind of a tough city. Yeah. You know, yeah. That? You know, you know, I really, I love Minneapolis being very clean and, uh, my, you know, we, uh, Gary's right next to Chicago. So I would go to Chicago here and there, but, um, I just, I just like the city atmosphere. I didn't care about it being cold. I didn't care about it at all, but coming from Gary, my mom's a school teacher. She taught for 40 years in the Gary school system. And my father was a retired police officer. He lives here in Minnesota with me now. Um, I take care of my dad now. He was a retired a police chief in Chicago. So, you know, two blue collar parents, you know, I wanted to come up to Minneapolis and uh, met my wife um, in 1999, Jody, um, up here in Minnesota. And, um, you know, I still get back. My mom stays in Gary. Uh, I get back and, you know, I watched my, my high school, Gary Westside. Uh, kind of see how they're doing. And uh, whenever I'm in town, you know, I'll, I'll stop by and see how the building is and everything. But, you know, I'm, I'm in Minnesota now. So I'm a Vi I was a Bears fan, but now I'm a Viking fan. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's a big switch. <laughs> so then you make the move uh, to, to Minnesota to go to college. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, you mentioned um, you know, being an athlete and, you know, some, you know, you had some tough times with some injuries, but you, you know, you stuck it out. You made some great friends, um, in college there that you're still great friends with today. And how special is that to have that group of friends that you made yep. at Augsburg continue and, on to this day? And that's something I tell my, my, my kids now, um, the relationships that I had in college, um, I had my great, my roommates, uh, we stayed at Ernest, uh, Willie Fisher, uh, we stay in touch all the time. We go out as couples. Um, the 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 teammates in the locker room, uh, that 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 bond that the team had. Um, that you know, we won an MIAC championship in 1998. How we all stay in touch via text, email. How that's important. Um, you know, your relationships as you grow as 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 a grown man, as a human being. Um, just to have that 
that family. You have a have a bond and family. Um, I still stay in touch with all my teammates, and um, you know, it's just it's just it's a great feeling. And then, um, you know, you you mentioned your your kids. Let's talk about your kids real quick. Obviously, uh, you mentioned your your daughter at Wake Forest. You have a son playing basketball. Maybe talk about about them real quick and, and you know how they're doing it in in their athletic yeah yeah right now um they're both are playing um uh, robbie who um was a long jump um 400 100 200 runner at the blake school um she long jumped to 20 feet in high school and so my wife and i was like whoa whoa this track is her deal track is her deal you know she played basketball she played volleyball but um you know, she wanted to, you know, kind of be away from mom and dad. So, so Wake Forest was a good choice for her. Um, now they're, she, she, uh, they're training her to be a multi, um, you know, to do, you know, six events now, you know, a little bit out of her comfort zone, but whatever she can get points, you know, in the ACC conference, you know, I'm like, Hey, do whatever they, they see the potential that you can do. Um, but uh, she, she long jumped and uh, my wife and I will go to three or four meets a year. Um, we're blessed to be able to do that, you know, go to Charlotte, get out of Minnesota for a weekend, you know, and go to her track meets. And, uh, my son, um, he's a starting point guard at McAllister as a freshman, you know, how that's, that's like, wow, you know, that's he, way better than I did in college, you know, and, and, and I support him totally on, on choosing McAllister. I wanted him to go to Augsburg, but Hey, it wasn't a good fit for him. He chose McAllister and, uh, I said, Hey, you know, it's, it's about you. It's not about me. So, you know, if, if you can balance the academics, just, you know, do the same thing I did. I'm glad he's home, close to home, so he can get a home cooked meal from his mom, you know, whenever she, whenever he wants. But, um, you know, right now, they actually, they beat Bethel yesterday, uh, Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, the first time in 16 years, yes. um, which, which I'm like, wow, already, you know, you guys are doing things, you know, for the, growing the program. You know, Coach Abe is doing a phenomenal job over there. So, you know, we, my wife and I will go to, you know, two basketball games a week. Right now it's COVID. And they're not allowing uh, fans, but uh, we can watch it virtually and we can go to some of the away games until the COVID cases drop. So, you know, my wife and I will we'll try to go to Wake Forest track meets between January and May, and we'll go to basketball games November, you know, to February, hopefully in the playoffs in March. This year the MIC playoffs are allowing every team to <laughs> make the tournament. So you never know whoever's hot at the end of the year can, can take it all away. You know, coach, you know, it's just who, who, who's, who's, the best, who's playing the best at the end of the season. That's what it matters. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You know, you, you talk about uh, your kids and uh, obviously make their, they're very talented athletes must come from the mom. Uh, Comes from mom. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but obviously Wake Forest and McAllister, um, highly highly uh academic you know rated and all that so obviously your kids are doing some some good things in the classroom too yeah we're blessed man we're blessed they're working hard they're able to balance the academics that's what we've been pushing for the last 10 years is academics you know i, I said if, if it just happened that wake forest is a small you know well they're, they're the one of the smallest d1 schools there's only five thousand students but I mean, academics first. At the end of the day, hey, let sports get you in the door. And, hey, you take sports as long as you can do it. And, um, you know, she wants to be a, um, a PA, PA assistant, a physician assistant. And my son is the one to go in business and economics. So, you know, I, I was a business major and, you know, he, he's worked with me in my business. And so hopefully, you know, some of that experience will help him, um, you know, as he, he does his, you know, his business goals and stuff in life. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the business. Your kids have been um, very in, in, integrated in that too. They, they've they, they've had to work. You've made them work. Uh, yes, right. That's right. They they've done plenty of deliveries for catering. Uh, they've worked at beaches, water parks. Uh, they've been supervisors. Um, you know, they understand the debits and credits. You know, <laughs> they understand you know what it takes to be successful. The eye contact with customers you know it comes to customer service and they're another set of eyes when i'm not there um i just hope the work ethic is what i've taught you know working hard you got to work hard to be successful and um you know you, you can't take the easy way in life 
to get, you know, to be successful. So, you know, if I hope those, those, those morals and values stick with them as, as they get older. And, you know, I know you got to get going here shortly, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a big day in our country. Um, you know, it's Martin Luther King day, uh, junior day. And, you know, it means a lot to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And, uh, you know, you mentioned being a uh, minority business owner and, you know, coming up in, you know, blue collar family and becoming successful. But, you know, what's something like a day like today mean for you and maybe your family? Yeah. Um, well, you know, my contracts, the, the contracts that I've won with my business is because of the fight that that in the last 30 to 40 years, um, I'm a small minority business. There's no way. Um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm called an ACDBE in, 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 in the airport industry. And if and if we didn't have uh, equal playing field, you know, with some of the bigger companies, I would never have the opportunity to be at the airport. Um, I have contracts with the state of Minnesota. And, and if I didn't have the target group business program helping, you know, small minority business, and that, that's through years of, of, of from the 70s to the 80s uh, for equality. I would have never been able to get in the door. So a day like today, you know, I, I at, at our cafe, I gave all my, my employees a day off. I said, hey, you relax, you work hard all week. We don't work on Martin Luther King Day. But, you know, just to have an equal playing field, um, that, that opened a lot of doors for my business. And, um, you know, I, I like to give back to the community. Now. I tell all my, I have a lot of high school and college kids that I mentor about, hey, you know, you got to work hard and you got to put your time in. You know, and, and a day like Martin Luther King Day to, to have the e equality, that, that that's huge. Um, but but I was at a Martin Luther King Classic today, you know, just remembering what, what he stood for. Uh, of, and, I, and I do want to give a quote quote before I leave um, of, of Martin Luther King before we go. But um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience for me. Um, I wouldn't be where I'm at if 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 he didn't pave the doors for, for small minority businesses like myself. Yeah, and I, I think. As we go, um, obviously the last few years have been difficult, but it's been difficult forever. Um, so we got to continue, you know, to to be there for each other and, and learn the lessons um, that the people before us have taught us, um, yeah. and learn from the bad ones that they've been trying to teach us, and uh, you know, appreciate the people like uh, Dr. King and, and everything that that he stood for, and you know all the good that has come because of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to do a quote here. Um, and, and this is, you know, if I can conclude with this, the function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Quote Dr. Martin Luther King. So I, as, as I conclude here, I appreciate you guys on on giving me the opportunity to tell my story. Um, and, and I, I, I want to, I actually, I want to be a sponsor too, you know, as, as we move forward. So I, I definitely appreciate the opportunity of, of taking the time to, to tell my story. So thank you very much. Well, uh, Robert, you know, thanks for uh, coming on here. There's, there's a couple of things real quick before we uh, sign off with you. Uh, first, I mentioned this on Facebook uh, last night. You're the hardest working man I know. Um, you're always working, uh, but you take you do take time to, to go and enjoy a meal with your family and with your friends. And I think that's pretty cool that, you know, you're, you're hardworking, but you, you take that time um, with, with your family. And uh, I know how much you can tell how much you love your family. Uh, you know, you're taking care, good care of your dad, you know, and, and you're, you're raising your kids right and all that. Um, so I really appreciate everything um, that you do. And I'm, I'm proud, Robert, I'm proud of the man that you've become. And I'm proud to say that I got to coach you uh, just a little bit in, when you were growing up. Hey, coach, you bring tears in my eyes. I appreciate you. So uh, you can have a great night. Mick, you want to end with one, anything? One question. Can we have you on again sometime, Robert? Hey, I, I, my door is open. My door is open. Just let me know and I'll make time. Okay, because there's a ton of questions I'd love to ask you about. Sure. Uh, growing up and, and uh, being part of Minnesota, business world, and all these things. I'm very curious about a lot of it. 
hey, let me know how I can give back. All right. All and, right. Uh, Thanks, guys. Have a great night, uh, Robert. And you can sign off, and Mick and I are going to continue on here. And All again, right. This will be – we'll download this to YouTube as well um, once I'm done here. So, Robert, appreciate, take care. Appreciate you guys. All right. Okay. All right, so we lost Robert. He, um, hardest working guy I know, um, always busy, always doing something. And he gave us a half hour, and that was pretty cool. And like you said, yeah, we that's one that we got to have back. We got to have back because we could go on for hours. And how cool is that? No, I, I would love to, you know, what went into his decision to become a, a businessman and how terrifying parts of that would be knowing that there were some things that, uh, you know, that he was going to have to deal with there that he probably didn't have um, experience. Another one would be um, growing up as a kid and within the family, what was MLK all about to them then, to his family, when he's looking at his father, his mother, or, you know, in, in how he experienced it as a child and how his relationship, how his appreciation uh, for him, how it evolved over the years, those kind of things, definitely. Absolutely. So, you know, and you know, how cool is it, the kid coming from Gary, Indiana, a small college in, in Minneapolis and makes that his home. And you can tell how proud he is of both places. Yeah. Um, but, you know, really ingrained in into the fabric of Minneapolis with all his businesses, mm -hmm. um, all his restaurants and concessions and catering stuff yeah. that he's doing it you know no you, you just see the the beauty of an opportunity for the right person and how they're able to take advantage of it very cool so uh i down here you can see me uh coach mckenzie he's the coach at minneapolis north okay agrees with me All right. rob's the hardest working man in minnesota <laughs> um we got to get i had coach mckenzie on over covid mm -hmm. we got to get him on as well okay do right. another have yep. another great year at, at Minneapolis North. Yep. Uh, story, tradition, uh, program there. And, you know, I kind of uh, was down for a little bit. And Coach McKenzie came there and uh, came, I suppose it's been seven, eight years ago. He's been there probably now mm -hmm. and done an incredible job. And they're, they're firing on all cylinders again this year. So we'll get try to get him on again as well. So, Mick, it's been a while. Uh, Christmas. <clears throat> Christmas, New Year's, back in, in Minnesota with the family? Yeah, yeah, we got it through it. Um, there's a little bit of COVID limping along there, unfortunately, uh, but everybody got out of, pulled out of it okay. Uh, like a lot of families, I'm sure, that it, it's, it's still around us. Uh, no, but fantastic. Everybody was in the same house, and that happens once a year, hopefully, and sometimes twice a year, but everybody was back. California, Seattle people, everybody was back. Uh, so that, that was fantastic. And it's just a special event that day. I mean, yeah. you feel the electricity type of thing. So, um, but uh, yeah, it was obviously, great. you know, we talked about, you know, your, your big family. So when you have your brothers and your sister, the uh, in laws and the kids, how many people are we talking at your dad's house? What do we have here? Let's see about 30. I mean, I didn't count. We didn't. I didn't take it. <laughs> Enough. Right in. Yeah. Enough. And right then, in. as per, were you the cook? I had a lot of help, but I was a vital cog <laughs> in the machine. I'll tell you that. And uh, would Robert give you a thumbs up on, on on your cooking? Well, you know. Let's see here. I think he would have. I mean, this these were pretty nice ribeyes. A oh. lot of them cooked to the right temperature. I mean, medium rare. Um, and then different, a couple of different sauces. You could go with kind of a mushroom cream sauce. You could go with a, a Bernays sauce. Um, a lot of different varieties there in addition to a lot of other things, cheesy potatoes, all those things. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So, and, you know, like I said, we-, we Thanks been... for asking. I know everybody <laughs> wanted to hear about what I had for Christmas dinner. Okay. Well, I mean, we are interested in that because, you know, 
you you talked about it before you talked about you know you're cooking well maybe it was just me maybe not everybody else but you know so i am interested you know nobody's no, watching anyway i like so. i like i like crowing about my cooking skills i definitely do so and you know we've been off for uh since before christmas and yeah. uh, we're going to start you know obviously we want to get robert on today and we got some guests that we're kind of finalizing so we'll, we'll kind of get this going and you know it's it's been it's been a lot of fun and again whenever we take a a few weeks off people are when are you gonna do another show when are you gonna do another show and again i think it's because of me it's not because of you but you know i appreciate you coming on with me <laughs> it's very nice <laughs> nice to my name too so what uh how about work what, what are you working on what well, stories there's a lot of a lot of updating stories we've read we've written before uh having to do with how the science and the the policies, everything has evolved with COVID. Because the story I wrote about uh, COVID-19 uh, six months ago, now, there, depending on the story, there would be some different elements involved in it uh, that we'd have to either, I wouldn't say change, because it's the core of the, the stuff still stands, but update with new details, new things that uh, we're doing now with how the, the CDC guidelines and, and it's, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing lately. It's not fantastically exciting stuff, but definitely it's an important part of what we do. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, with everything going on again, it's important to update that stuff because I think so, sometimes in, it gets portrayed as oh, we're getting tired of it, which we are. Um, so let's, it can't, Let's just go on. Well, we got to update ourselves. We got to figure out, you know, what's going on, and uh, get through this again. Yeah, and uh, to a lot of people, it's honestly it's a little confusing. And I think that the thing that we have to remember is that eighty-five percent. I mean, that's it's between eighty-five and ninety. It's between eighty and ninety, probably. This minute, uh, of the people in the hospital are unvaccinated. And that's the part of it that, to me, I just, I want people to know that. Yeah. And if you have to do it, if you have, if you don't want to get vaccinated, you, you got your reasons, there's nothing I'm going to be able to do to change your mind. But I, I think that that's something we have to remind people of, is that if you're unvaccinated, you're more susceptible to serious issues. And we don't want that. Right. We don't want that for anybody. And, uh, you know, again, that's not up to us to tell people you have to, but, you know, just given everybody exactly. the yes the info that you know it, it's it's worse if, if you're not yeah. type of thing so uh let's see what i was gonna ask this oh we gotta talk real quick what? before we sign off oh. we, we, we gotta talk about the purple we gotta oh. talk about the vikings <laughs> uh, right after christmas i was at the viking game against the rams mm -hmm. uh had a and I didn't tell Robert this. I should have. I, I had a beer and a sandwich at in his place okay. up there, and it was awesome. And his, the workers in his uh, kiosk there are incredibly friendly and just really are are efficient, mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's a really neat place. Um, but obviously, the Vikings lost that game. Very disappointing. Uh, and a crucial loss. Yeah, and you know, from sitting and going to an NFL game. Um, is so different than watching it on TV. You know, uh, when you're live, obviously the emotions of a pregame mm -hmm. at the, the NFL or a big time college game, um, even, you know, a USD SDSU game, you know, that, that's just one of those really neat things to be involved the, the in. The energy's there. Yeah. 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 You can't replace that energy when you're watching something on television. And then once the game starts, it's, I'd rather be, sitting on my couch <laughs> <laughs> i paid that much for this <laughs> so uh, but uh, that was only the second time i've been to uh the new stadium uh -huh. in minneapolis and the first one was the minneapolis miracle and okay. uh <clears throat> so i was expecting bigger things than losing to the rams yeah. you know but uh, you know and then so they go on to lose that game and obviously uh lose again or beat the beat the bears but lose their coach lose their gm you know what what are we thinking 
are, are we in a total rebuild here um, or do we have hope? You know, a lot of, a lot of people talking a lot of different ways on, is there hope for next year? I would say yes on that, but they gotta, they gotta throw, start throwing some strikes uh, personnel wise and they have to get the, the money thing figured out so that they can have a, um, so that they can create some depth and, and create um, a few more strengths, I guess, within, if they keep cousins, then how are we gonna do it with that big block of money going to one person? And uh, if you can pull it off, if you can draft, if you can sign people, the right people, and, and maybe you can, he can take it, you know, lower his salary for a year cap sensitive or cap sensitive adjustments. Uh, I don't see why they couldn't be de pretty decent next year, but there's a lot, there's a lot of things that have to happen before you get to that point where you start assessing next year's roster. Absolutely. And, you know, you, <clears throat> I've had this conversation with uh, some people and they said, well, look at how close we were this year. We, the Vikings, look at how close. I said, well, yes, but they're also very close to being four and 13. Yeah. You know, yeah. They could easily have been, you know, 13 and four, but they were real close to being, you know, so. I would say overall justice was rendered on this season. I mean, that was the team that they had. And yeah. there was certainly when Hunter got hurt, that I, I think that that's kind of an underrated factor in this, that if you have one more really good pass rusher, one of the best pass rushers in the game. Absolutely. Um, that might have made them a much more difficult team, or at least a little bit more difficult team to beat a lot of the times. And uh, you, you mentioned Kirk Cousins. And this is, again, being live and watching, you know, obviously everybody knows kind of the knock on Kirk Cousins. is He doesn't throw it downfield, he, you know, can't win the big game, things like that. And from sitting in the stands, this is what I noticed. Um, first of all, I noticed they put the – comparisons between Stafford and Cousins up and Cousins had like a hundred more completions than Stafford. Cousins had, okay, all right. But he had like five or 600 less yards. Mm -hmm. So he had more, more completions, which makes sense. Um, and then watching the game, you could just tell, um, and I'm guessing if you're rooting for a team that Matthew Stafford's playing for, he probably drives you crazy because he's, he was throwing that ball all over the field. He had three picks that game, but I mean, he was, there was just seemed like this guy wants to win. This guy's trying everything in his power to get it downfield, to get it to his playmakers. And uh, you know, so I, I, I mean, like I said, I'm sure he can drive you crazy if, but uh, he gave those uh, receivers a chance. Um, I think, you know, and there's definitely, if you put Cousins on a team with a decent offensive line that has a, an overall very good team, he's probably going to be capable of, you know, going to a Super Bowl. Yeah. I, I would, that, that wouldn't surprise me at all. But you're not, he's not in that situation. And I think he's, from the start, in hindsight, I was glad that they signed him when they did. But I think they thought this is, a, this is it. This, this is going to get us here now. And it wasn't, and you can't blame that necessarily on Cousins. But overall, you can still maintain that he's part of the problem now. That big picture, there's there's problems there, and that he was miscast as being this guy where the offensive line they were going to kind of string it together several years in a row. It wasn't going to work, and he's not an improvisational quarterback. He, that's not a strength of his. He wants it. He wants to do this and this, and then you keep going down the field. And they they were not set up as that type of team. And I think that that's why you got two guys who got whacked. Essentially, that's the, a big part of it. And whether he goes to, I don't know. And I can't say here they should get rid of him. I, there's no way I can say it. But certainly, if they're if he's coming back, they need uh, they need to be able to figure out the finances so that they can have a a good team next year if they figure that figure out well we really can't pull that off with any realistic expectation then he's got to go yeah got trade it. him if you can uh, get something and i'm sure that there's going to be a lot of not a lot but at least a few teams that are very curious about whether they could have kurt cousins next year yep 
and I, the quarterback situation uh, on all 32 teams is always interesting to me. Obviously, you've got about four or five that, okay, if you had that guy, you'd be pretty good. Yeah. Um, the rest, then you got four or five probably on the bottom. Like, eh, I, don't, I don't think I'd want that guy. Yeah. But in the middle, yeah. Again, it's it's what system are they in the right system? Do they have the line, the receivers? You know, do they have the people around them? Um, and then, you know, it's it's athletics. Are they going to have a good year? You know, are they playing with confidence? Confidence. You know, I help with some high school basketball. Confidence is it's the most underrated thing in athletics, and I mean, the, and the toughest thing to achieve. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if, if you got success, if you're physically superior, if those things, okay, it's easier to get the confidence, but for the people who need the confidence to be kind of their difference maker, what, what puts them into a different category, you have to earn that confidence yeah. and you have to do it, kind of do it yourself. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I, I look at golf that, you know, you're, you're one-on-one -on -one with yourself out there on the course. If you believe you're going to hit that shot, you're probably going to hit it. Uh, you know, now you transfer that into a basketball game. Well, yeah, you can believe you're going to make the shot, but you got to have the athletic tools to, to do that. And then once you have that, the tools and the confidence, you, you're way better than you were five minutes ago. Yes. If you were just, gonna, I don't know if I can do this. So yeah. um, very interesting, you know, and, and obviously in the NFL, professional sports, you're talking about salary caps and all that. I'm not smart enough to figure that stuff out to no. figure out where everybody is on, on those as well. So, but it'll be a, definitely be an interesting off season. And I mean, once, once they're not making the playoffs, I want to be entertained. Okay. <laughs> so, and this is going to entertain me for the off season with the Vikings. Absolutely. So uh, let's wrap up with, uh, obviously, again, we talked to Robert about this and you mentioned it. Um, Martin Luther King day, uh, you know, out here in South Dakota, you know, I think, you know, I look back at, you know, I wonder what was going on in South Dakota um, during the civil rights, you know, obviously because, you know, predominantly white um, out here in, in South Dakota. Uh, but, you know, watching his speeches and learning about him and, and, I think how our world's kind of shrunk, so to speak, in the fact that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting to, to know we're more and more diverse every day in, in Sioux Falls, you know, you go to the, the schools in, in Sioux Falls and, and, you know, how diverse this community really is and, and all communities in South Dakota, really. Um, but what a, an amazing time that had to be back, you know, when the civil rights was going on. I, 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 I just can't imagine living through that. It, um, I was just reading a, a, a Vanity Fair article from 2006 today. Uh, I think his name is Clarence Jones. He's uh, Martin Luther King's lawyer for a long time and kind of confidant. And just really, it was a, a wonderful magazine article just about that. I mean, this guy was there for all of it. And I, I assume he's gone now, but um, uh, just every little details about what it was like during those times that you had FBI surveillance, J. Edgar Hoover, all these uh, now seem fantastically terrible things that were part of the picture. But uh, but overall, being part of history like that, and, and I mean, he's got his own day, you know, and uh, he should. <laughs> yeah. We're not getting our own day, Nick. We're not, not going to get our own day, but that's all right uh, because the guys like that absolutely deserve it. And uh, very proud of uh, to say that I'm 100% in support of uh, his day and, and all the, the people out there that are trying to, uh, to make a difference and improve our world um, through different programs, um, different relationships, and, uh, you know, to make our world, our town, our city, our state, our country, just a better place for everybody involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anything before we wrap up, Nick? I think we went the whole show. Well, I know we did. 
without um, losing power, which is the first in about six shows. Yeah. Um, so we've figured out electricity. Okay. So yeah, plugging that thing in. Nice. That's that's pretty good. We we got to thank uh, Shenanigans for having us. Yes. Um, back here in the back room, it's nice and quiet back here, but. Uh, uh, thanks for standing in a great place. I'm gonna, I'm starving, so I'm gonna get something to eat. I'm not sure. Okay. What, All right. I'm not sure I'm, what I'm, I'm with gonna you get. Now. So, okay. um, thanks for everybody that that watched, and we will be back next week, um, working on the finalizing the guest for next week. But uh, I'm sure it'll be a great guest, and we'll be stellar as always. Yes. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad to get we're getting back in the groove here, Dan. <laughs> All right. Now here's going to be the next part. How do I shut this thing off? That's going to be the next issue. Okay. But we'll figure it out. I'll just close it out. How about that? Oh, there we go.